vision was born from a vow I made with the Lord on a sick bed on a cold December in 1975. I was dying for four days I was to be sacrificed as the part of the annual sacrifice for my clan by the one that had the powers and agreement with Satan in the clan the seniors before me had been sacrificed and I was to go and my father this time decided to fight it and every day he will cry out, Oh God of Elijah. That was the only kind of prayer he knew how to pray. If it is true that fire came down from heaven and devoured those people of Baal, I need that fire to set my son free. While I was still conscious in the first few days, I kept hearing him repeat the same prayer. And each time he prayed it, he wasn't looking at me. He would face the wall and put his hand on the wall. And he was the one who started the Equa Church in Apapa, Marine Beach, Apapa. My whole family, I was part of that choir. Even though I was going to my cinema after that, Danjuma Cinema and all the other cinemas in Lagos, very rascally, but we were in the choir. I didn't believe in God. I didn't want to serve God because I thought those who served God were hypocrites. Now, I'm telling the story of the vision pioneer for those of you who are new. Since we are reviewing the vision. But that day, I found myself not wanting to die. I had never come face to face with death. People die. I thought I was too young. It's old people who die. Of course, my seniors died, but I didn't, I couldn't understand the explanations my parents gave for their death because they were hiding it. I saw my immediate senior sister die in front of me. That's a story for another day. But that day, I didn't want to die. So I started crying. My father was, I was just wishing somebody would do something. I'd become breathless. I was becoming unconscious. I could hear sounds, descend the voices. My eyes were going dim. I was useless. They had to take me to poo, to pee, and to carry me back, clean me up. Very helpless. That was my state. Then I had myself deep inside my heart. I didn't believe in God, but that day I said, God, if you are there and you exist, hear the cry of my father because it's too late to forgive me and I vow that if you bring me out of this I will serve you for the rest of my life I will look for you and serve you who saved me for me I thought it was too late to give my life to Jesus so I didn't give my life but I made a vow that I will serve him. That was the beginning of my journey. And on the fourth day when I was supposed to die and the man who was doing the sacrifice came to take his sacrifice, what I had never seen happen, known could happen, happen. I saw a flash of lightning and the lightning hit me like a thunderbolt and opened up something in my chest. It was like my chest was opened up. And fresh air came into my nostrils and my body. I was feeling air for the first time in first day, four days. Whether it was cold or hot, I didn't know. But And I found myself breathing deeply. <gasps> As if I was already dead. And I stood up. Instantly. Not getting well gradually. And like in a trance, caught up in that, I looked at that old man who was standing in front of me, who was carrying the magic, and I told him. I spoke to him. And I told him, 
do you think you can take, carry me, you can kill me the way you killed my brothers? Number one, how did I know he killed anybody? And I said, their blood is crying out for you. And I kept quiet. And I fell back weak. Just those words took all the other strength in me and I fell back on the bed. And the man, I don't know that it was a stroke or a shock. He went into shock. Why? Because I called him by his first name. In my area, it's an abomination. To call your grandfather. He was a junior brother of my grandfather. By his first name. His birth name, not just first name. And I spoke to him those words you just heard. And I fell back. My father is still alive. I still tell people you can confirm it from him. That is why he reveres me. He sees me as a special child. It was because of me he had his faith in God. So I'm a symbol of many things in the family. The rest, I will tell another time. But that was the beginning of my journey. I made a vow. And so when I was free, or freed that day, and that happened in Zutrum, we never go home. But that December, I insisted I needed to see my village. I grew up in Lagos. Spoke Yoruba fluently. Only picked my language because my father forced us to speak the language. But I'd never seen, I don't know where Kaduna is. I don't know where the north was. I was born, grew up in Lagos. It was from Lagos I was going to my secondary school. The only time I came to Kaduna was to write the primary school living exams because my father wanted me to come to school in the north. And when I wrote it, I was given a scholarship to Okene Kwara State, Abdulaziz Atta Memorial College. That was the only time I came to Kaduna, but never got home. Listen, because this is very important. 76, we crossed over 75. This happened around 26th of December to 27th of December, 1975. We crossed over into January 1975. My soul began to hunger and to search for the man who saved me. Because I was critical of Christianity, because I didn't know which arm of Christianity to believe in. So I said, God, I just want to know the one who saved me that day. I will look for him until I find him. So I started looking for that one. How many of you understand what I'm saying? And that's how I got in the visions. I will pray in the night. You who, who met me that day, don't abandon me. I made you a vow. I mean it. But I want to find you so that I can feel secure. I don't have peace until I find you. Now, this is the Kure. I've always been curious about God. And I started praying like that, praying like that. It was from those prayers that the visions began. Instead of answering me, I will see myself in the night. Instead of seeing Jujuk pursuing me, I see myself in the evening, what the house has called Gogua. I will see winds with fire burning in the skies, fighting themselves, darkness and fire, fighting. And I will see the world reeling, going round it. And there will be great turmoil and fear. And I will wake up afraid. And nobody will tell me what that means. That was how it started. 
He showed me things first that I became confused. I thought I was going mad. I went back to school to Okene. And I started asking everybody what kind of spirit met me. I remember between March and April, one evangelist, Amos, came. And during his preaching, he said, some of you have had direct contact with the Lord. And the Lord called you out. And touched you. And healed you miraculously. Miraculously. He wants you to commit your life to him totally. And serve him. And he preached one long sermon. Well, that was all that I had. I made an altar call. Before he finished the altar call, I marched out. And I stood there in front of Evangelist Amos. And I think we were only two daddy that got born again. Or was I the only one? After all his sweating and preaching, he was bald-headed. And I, while I stood there, I was weeping. I knelt down crying, crying, crying. He was telling me to confess Christ. I was crying. And I was asking to be accepted in heaven. Begging for my soul in heaven. Until he patted me and said, stop. Because the whole congregation was still waiting. He said, repeat this after me. I repeated it and continued crying and said, Lord, accept me. I wanted to hear a voice say, I accept you. I wanted to be sure it's still the same person that struck me. I didn't want it with fake spirit. But once I finished that prayer with him and said, Lord, accept me. I felt that same lightness I felt that day. On that sick bed. A weight lifted away. For the first time. I had what is called assurance of salvation. Now listen. Up to now. I still don't know when I got born again. Whether I got born again. That day on that bed. On the 27th December. 1975. Or it was the day. I knelt down. In March. But it doesn't matter. I had an assurance of salvation in 76. I sought him from 75 December 27. Looking for the spirit that set me free. That's my story. Then from that time. The visions continued. But this time there were clearer understandings. From that time. I will open the word. I will read. I read the Bible beginning to the end. I had understanding more than my teachers. That year, I became Bible study secretary. Somebody who just got born again a few months ago in elections, I was made Bible study. I had read, studied, I can tell you Jesus and defend Jesus anywhere. Charles Achonwa was my traveling secretary. And we had some big fights with him because I argued a lot with them. Just like the MOG was talking here. They used to talk to one another. My hunger and my strain was from a different place. So I will argue with you. Because it's him I want to follow, not you. I found myself looking different from other people. Then the vision continued that year. That year was full of visions. But it was sometime in that April. At the end of that April. One of the visions, for the first time, I saw human beings gathered from all over. That same wind again took place, but I saw this time human beings gathered in confusion. And I heard the Lord say, I heard the voice say clearly, Behold, I will make you a chronicler. I still remember that particular word was used, the word chronicler. And that grammar was big for me. I had to go and research what was chronicler. But I had it. I'll make you a chronicler. You shall break the tide of these winds. Whatever you will hear of me, you will speak to these people that are confused. 
so that the power of the wind can be broken. But only that which you hear will you speak. And by you, I will separate seasons. And I will bring peace to the earth. And you will make a highway for my name. And you shall be called the watchman. Now, once I had chronicler, I had watchman. That's all. When I started praying for interpretation over and over, it was from those many visions that all my first four books were written. Invasion from Hell. If you read Invasion from Hell, you will know that the, the, the book is just scattered and it's fearful. You will see fight here. That, uh, things about sin, things about people, children that are born outside wedlock who don't know father or um, who don't know father how some of them are satanic children that will be used to hate christ and poison the world and do wickedness to the world because they hate the world for the way they were born it's there in that book you still have space for invasion from hell it was coming from the abundance of visions my first four books Practical prophetic prayer. They were all from abundance of visions. Uh, apostolic invasion, which was a follow up to invasion from her, was coming from those many visions. And then one that I cherish the most, God's chosen leader, who came from the fiery fires. Of those visions. I believed everything in those letters. I still believe them. Every word in apostolic. Uh, I mean chosen leader. God's chosen leader. I believe in them. It was in those visions I learned about the power of the morning. The womb of the morning. It wasn't from Bible study. They were visions. I just discovered them in the Bible studies. The power of the morning. And that the morning was a womb. It was then I knew about the evening tide. And I started finding out, according to people, when does the evening start? When does it end? It is then I learned about the powers of the night. The powers of the stars, of the moon, of the day. The ordinances of day and night. The powers of the earth. The laws that govern the earth. That every creation is governed by a law. They started from visions. So anything that I am is a manifestation of vision. And that is why a lot of my peers that are ministers cannot understand me. Everything I say, let me go and pray for. They say, but the things are obvious. I say, they are not obvious. I don't have any confidence in any other thing until I seem to hear him give me a peace and an approval. It was a peace that saved me from death. And until that peace comes, I am not secure with any decision I make. Even about other human beings, about my children, my wife, my home, myself, and your life. Do you understand the background of this vision now? At first, I thought, I didn't come out to, I didn't plan to start a ministry. For those of you who don't know, know now. I joined Capro in order to carry out that mission because for me, I saw it as a missionary calling. I had a mission to the world. Capro had a mission to the world. And it was the first northern missionary group I first came into contact with as a student in Zaria after my secondary school. We opened their offices in Galetsu. We're cleaning the floor for them, washing everyone. Where? Uncle Bayo was the one that began the whole thing. And we were like children. I was hungry. I grew up to become the prayer coordinator for Capro. 
and grew up to be in their council. Are you hearing this story? Uncle Bayo is still alive. Those of you who are older have heard Uncle Bayo preach that on the pulpit here. That if Capro had made space for me, and I hope she's hearing here, I wouldn't have started this ministry. Capro made me prayer coordinator. But they thought I was approaching everything by prayer too much. And they wanted to slow this, this prayer. It was working, no? But they feared I might take it too far. I might go cuckoo, you know? I might go cuckoo up there. I will miss road. And people go, they miss road. That's why I can tell you that you have to draw the line. I've taught you that there is a slight difference between mysticism and spirituality. Mysticism and mystery. The rope is, you can easily twill the other way around. I've always worn that one here. And warn my members, if you know you are not capable, don't start going to the deep too much. Stay where you can carry. Because Satan will make you miss road. So I don't quote Kure when you are falling. Capro began to, even though I was a high man there, I became the first Capro leader here in Kafanchan. I started the branch in Kafanchan for Capro. We built Kauna. Now, coming to Kauna, in those days, just like Gaya said here, Kauna in the night, these Kagoma people are dangerous people, Sekia people particularly. In the night, you will wake up there. You will see the grass burning. In Kauna, we will challenge it. I'm giving you the background. You are workers. So I, you know where we are coming from. You can tell our story. Everybody is able to tell the story of their leader. We built Kauna with mud the Kafanchan Tower. I wish Mrs. Arua was alive. She was part of it. Joshua Afang and the Afang family. The senior sister. They were all part of the Kafanchan Tower. We molded blocks. That's why I learned how to build from Capro. It's a missionary thing. You don't build because you have cement. You need a cover. You can easily build a cover. You don't need money for that. All you need is your, your two bare hands. We will mold blocks ourselves. I was a lecturer. But the days I was not teaching, we were in Kauna, we would fold our trousers or wear short knickers, molding blocks and building the huts. The first huts that were used and the first conference that was held in Kauna, we molded that blocks. Them Joshua Cardone and the rest of them. We molded the blocks. Bele Akoni was our speaker. And Onkubayo Famonure. And we held the conference in Kauna. Last day's gathering. They still hold it up to today. That Kauna. In the night we will see fire burning. You will hear birds. One day. We were praying in one of the huts. The witch that was flying. Fell down. We thought it was a board. We just had the roof crash over us. Those roofs that we had just built. We attached it like that. And the roof came crashing. We saw a naked woman. Old woman. Naked as her mother gave birth to her. She crashed. We thought she was breaking bones. She wouldn't break any bone. But she fell from the sky. What was she doing in the sky? If you have not seen witchcraft, I have seen witchcraft. These are the stories that make up this vision. Then when Onkubayo was almost coming to an end and Peter Ozodo was taking over, there were people who formed a conspiracy because at the center I was beginning to gain favor. I was a lecturer. And I wanted to go resign from College of Education and go full-time ministry with Capro. The plan was there. And I was being encouraged. Then only for them to begin to say, no, 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 no. If I'm going to come full time, the choice was given me. Forget this prayer thing. 
and face missions. Because at that time I received the revelation of prophetic evangelism. That comes from the place of prayer. You can win souls from the place of prayer. They said forget it. I said I cannot use the weapons you are teaching me except the weapons he has given me. I have learned to use only that which I received from heaven. They told me to forget that one. I have to follow their curriculum, use their standard. Their standard will take me 10 years to win one soul. I was already winning souls here. Did you hear what I said? Maybe I was the next level, like Onkubayo will say, for Capro. They just didn't see it. So they said no, but that they will bless me to go and start my own. Now, for those of you who are hearing, and I said no, I was not led to start a ministry. They said, well, you cannot do this prayer thing. So I decided, okay, let me start a prayer movement. Not ministry per se. Where we do this evangelism, do missions, and raise a standard like God told me. Separating darkness from the light. And establishing God and making a highway for the king of glory, the Messiah, to come back. In those days, even in Capro, we believed that Jesus would come the next day. We lived as if he was coming in the evening. So we had no time. That's why I wanted to leave my work and go full time. I didn't care where I went full time. I was going to be part of a vineyard. Blessed are the pure in the spirit. Bile was our first speaker in that prayer movement. And on Kubayo, the two of them and myself, who was a visionary at that time. And we held it here in this secondary school, this uh, same ATC where we got married. Technical college, I call it ATC. Technical college. That was where the first meeting that culminated into the starting of this ministry started. Pastor Ame, one of our first pastors in this ministry, was a teacher there and he was zealous in prayer and he had ganged up with me. He was seeing the signs so he decided to be my student to learn because he was seeing the same visions. He couldn't interpret it properly. I could interpret it for him. So he joined me and together we started planning that meeting. It was after the takeoff of that meeting, those who came from town, including one, including, included one Peter, Ena, Ena Bokai or something. Peter joined us. Peter became the second leader. And then I went down to the car meeting and said, because we have started that, I am resigning as leader. I think I handed over Capro to Joshua Afang. I said, I'm not going with any Capro member. But a few of them who were already part of the prayer, it was the prayer that attracted them. The miracles, that, demons were running away from us. People, demons in Kafanchan were afraid of us. So anybody who was afraid of demons joined us. You know, that is always the case. If you fear demons, you will join those that demons are afraid of. That's how the first disciples began. Mommy Arua, the late Mommy Arua, so when you see me mourn her, you know that. Joined us. Evelyn, who is late, Mama Evelyn, an Igbo lady. They joined us. Brother Mark, Elder Mark, I don't know that he's still in town. Am I Naya, are you here? They joined us. They may mind Naya. That's why I still honor them. Uh, Joshua who was walking there in the giant hospital in Saminaka will come down where is Joshua? Adamu can you stand up? can you see he can barely stand up now? and you can see the white hair but these are the Old Testament members of the throne room foundational members Joshua was my armor bearer who followed me many places in the north. People abused him. They called him names. You are following a small boy. Even though I was a lecturer, but I was younger. Hey, these small boys you are following. You are an experienced civil servant. 
These lecturers are deceivers. I say, they followed. Then others began to follow, like Mrs. Uh, uh, the woman with the house opposite there. Uh, Mrs. Nyam and the rest of them. All of them joined. Then much later, they too joined. People start coming from over. The revival was spreading. When we called for our conferences, people came. Look, we didn't have any place to accommodate them. We begged for spaces, but because the churches were calling us blood suckers, they wouldn't give us. So we came to the graveyard there. That place where you are seen used to be a graveyard of kings, of the kingly family, the Bala family. They were the Mayanguas of this place. The present king there, the, the great-great-grandfather's dead body were there because they've been kings for a long time in this area. It was called Angwabatang, the Angwa of thieves. Did you hear what I said? And because demons were disturbing them from there, the dead spirits were walking in the night. So to test me, the Ababa took me. He said, okay, if you can buy, we will sell you only three plots. I begged for four. He said, no, three. Then he made it five. But if you can buy it for 10,000 10, naira, 10,000 naira was millions in those days. He knew, that's why he told me to buy two or three. I said, no. He said, I went and I said, Father, the, where we were holding the meeting there at, uh, is it Soba Road or whatever they call it, that? Bida Road. The Bida closed there. Water was overflowing that place. They were driving us away. A church had given us a bauta, had given us that place. This line of Ingo was part of that church. But we were being given quick notice. I prayed. This uh, Bishop Yari, Joe Yari now, in, was my first administrator. We hired a room, I was a lecturer, don't forget, on that same bit, that road, room and parlor. So Bishop Yari, is now Bishop, Archbishop, sorry, was sitting in front as the administrator was sitting in the next office. Listen, we were sitting there one day, when we heard the siren, ah, physically, not in the spirit, blowing, and the whole street was cleared. Escort riders are taking over, and a black car parked in front of our office, and the owner came out. Who was that owner? Baba Gani. He was then deputy governor. He was one of our disciples. And that day, that day, that time, like I told you, I never wanted anybody to visit me. Because they will see our humble places and they will disrespect us. Let them be seeing the anointing where we were. But Baba Gani came. He said he has, he has come to see his pastor and his father in the Lord. Ah, and he saw himself being driven to a street where there were people everywhere. He thought I was bigger than that. And he met me in a room and parlor office. As if I was one of these uh, mushroom pastors. But he knew me to be a lecturer. I said, yes, I still lecture, but this is my office for the ministry. He walked in there and he said, just like General Wawakure, he refused to sit. He said, is there no place? I said, there is a place. But the poor assistant who can't start using that place until we pay them 10,000, 10, 30,000 for three plots. But we won five plots. He said, take me to the place. So I entered a beautiful with escorts. Everybody was coming out to look at us. Then we drove to this hill, came down there. The king left his palace where they still have their house, where the apostolic church is. Quickly rushed there when he saw us, siren and he thought some governor either had visited his area. So he quickly rushed with his raoni, 
and ran down there. And he saw me standing with Baba, showing him the grave place, that slanting where our, uh, what do you call this building? The administrative block is down to part of the, uh, the 16 story where it starts, and then down this way to where the rainbow is. The hill was slanting. It was a bigger hill that time. Baba said, is this where you want to buy? I said, this is the only place available in town. Nobody will sell to us because they say we are blood suckers. Baba said, they call you blood suckers. I said, yes, sir. He said, why? I said, if you speak in tongues now, you are a blood sucker. And he was already speaking in tongues. I baptized him in the Holy Ghost baptism, him and his wife, in the government house in Taraba. So they both spoke in tongues. And he was e e e ERC or e e whatever they call them now. Uh -huh. Listen, this is the story of throne room. For those of you who are newer, I'm now giving you the other backgrounds outside the vision. Maybe with this, I will stop, we will pray. When we come, we will do the Holy Ghost and fire, which was what I wanted to finish with, but I won't go there. But so that you know the story, it's founded on very honorable men, people of integrity. And from the beginning, Highly placed people were involved because they were influenced. It was an engineer from Portaco that built this first building here. And put four pillars and put a zinc. And we were using blocks to sit. Molded blocks that we would have used to build the wall. It was iron rods that were standing there or round iron with a zinc. The engineer had to bring it in a trailer all the way from Portacon. They were all members of truth. He came to bless us because he was blessed by us. That was our humble beginning. Outsiders have built the whole of these buildings here. Somebody who was blessed from far will come and give us a hospital. Will come and build a tower. Will come and build this and build that and build that. That is how we have been building these buildings. It's not from forcing tight out of members. Mm -mm. That's how we ride some of the cars we ride. These same people will say, you are my pastor. You can't ride anything lower than this. I give you this. There were those who couldn't afford to give us cars. But they made us go to learn how to drive. And they started borrowing us their vehicles. Like Mrs. Anaka. I still remember Mrs. Anaka Toyota Corolla. That I drove for years until she died. So we have a very humble beginning. And that's how we bought that place. We couldn't build it. Baba said he was led to buy the land. We bought the land. The other man thought we would run away. When we came, all the spirits ran away. The singing they were hearing in their houses stopped because we started night vigils there. Night vigils amongst the dead. We told them the earth and the fullness thereof is the Lord. And that the Lord used them to keep that place for us. Now that the real occupants have come, we were giving quit, quit notice to the former tenants. Because the owner of the place has come. So they found out that all the witches that were here drinking their blood, all of them stopped drinking blood. I mean it, literally. That they could sleep at night. Before you will see light shining all over the place. The lights were not shining. For those of you who don't know, our first conference, people sat in the grasses on the ground. There used to be some trees, a tree there, some, a few trees there that were uprooted to build these buildings. Under those trees, we had our first conference. We cooked our food openly. Oh, sincerely, those days we felt we were going to heaven in that season. While we were settling down there, people like Mrs. Muazu, all of them, all the way from Kotangora, they will bring their delegation. People were bringing delegations from all over. We were sitting in these grasses together. That's why they are still faithful members. As the world went round in the north, it was like salvation had come to the north. The north began to embrace us. Christians who dared to be different. 
Just like in the days of the deeper life. Christians who dare to be different. It was with our sweat that these places were built. That's the story of Toronto. The rest is history. All these brochure things, they came later. We didn't care about brochure. We cared about establishing God's kingdom. There were great revivals in Mina. People like Peter, uh, 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 that, that Peter, who sleeps with one eye open in the night. At that time, he had one eye that was not looking too nice. How many of you remember? But Peter will pray throughout the night, pray throughout the, always fasting. We never thought he would ever get married until recently. We never thought he would ever get married. But when Peter prays, the dead rise. But demons run. People possessed with demons. Amen will carry leaves. I did that once. I think they saw it. Amen will carry leaves. They take the leaves. He will speak to the leaves to remove the demons from that person's body. Strange things began to happen. They were people of like minds. That's why I said people of like minds. And they had their anointing. In Lagos alone, we had about 3,000 members and followers. When we hold our vigils, it was an uproar. We grew like wildfire in those days. It's the same thing. We spread to Portacourt. We're using the civic center. It will be filled up to the brim. The beginning of this ministry was by fire. Then as we grew, there was a need for structure. That was where, for the first time, we began to appoint ourselves. I became the leader of the vision. Because I initiated the start. I put everybody together, everything together. Ame became my deputy. The lecturer in whose school we had the thing. Became my deputy. Peter became the leader for prayer and programs. Those were the first three leaders. We didn't have a treasurer. Eh? We trusted each other with money. Money wasn't a problem. We put an asusu. We put it there. We removed our money. Nobody suspected the other. We didn't live by money. That was the major problem with us. We didn't live by money. So money was never a problem. All of us had our faith to do things. In fact, we boasted in from nothing making something happen. We went by faith, not knowing what to expect, and we conquered places. We didn't wait for provision because our faith was that God provided everything. The question is, where is that throne room again? Those were the earliest members. That's why unto death, Mrs. Arua remained faithful. She was the head of Equa Women, all around, or Matron. All. She protected. When she finished college education, she applied to come full-time. I stopped her. I said, you don't need to be full-time to be full-time. You are finished with college of education. Your life is here. We, had an, we brought, gave her an office here. She used to come here. In the hardest of times when she was the most sick, she still came to work here. She will spend her day with the academy there. She is the mother of the academy. There was a time I nursed the idea of naming the academy after her. Naomi Arua Academy. Uh, uh, Naomi Arua Throne Room Academy. So at it's still related to throne room. But Naomi Arwa. She became the mother of education. She was the one who looked after our scholarships. The scholarship idea. We sent many people to universities, to colleges of aviation. Uh, our former youth leader. Uh, what is his name now? Katuka. With the millions we paid for his aviation school in the School of Aviation, is one of the products of our scholarship under Mrs. Arua. We have quite a number of university students who are graduates. 
including the Robinsons, who are the next generation of leaders. They are all sons of throne room who grew. Sam Batuxin, they went to our Sunday school here. We've been here for quite a while. And we still serve Jesus the way we are serving him today. And that's why I'm beginning to feel uncomfortable when people want to change the rules. It's the same God yesterday. It's the same righteousness and faithfulness. It's the same righteousness today. Holiness has not changed. Hard work has not changed. It's the same God tomorrow. Shall we rise up on our feet? We have used the whole of today to talk vision. And I've refuted the foundational and background part for all of you who are just coming and starting with us. Wawai Kure joined us. Dogo Yaro joined us. Uh, at the point, Timi Alaibe from the south joined us. The heads of chambers of commerce in Port Harcourt River State found their roots here, became very rich from within throne room. We have quite a number of rich people that sprang out from here. All over the place, God raised people. Then governors began to join us from across the nation, including the late Enang. Is it Enang they call him now? An Air Force officer who was governor of River State at a point. Then governors befriended us, like uh, the, the man from... Uh, uh, the burning KB, what is his name? Como, my junior prophet. He calls himself junior prophet. I'm the senior prophet. We have had very priest, great people as sons and daughters that have prospered by this ministry. We still have great people, including presidents, who are still enjoying the graces of this ministry. We have come a long way. And that's why those of us who are present workers, we should upgrade ourselves. Knowing that we are leading leaders that are more knowledgeable than us. One of the things I was going to teach during this retreat, which I taught those who, I'm teaching other people, but sometimes I find myself failing in teaching all some of these things and keeping the regulation. Every pastor of throne room should be more knowledgeable than his members. If your members know more than you the Bible, you should not be their pastor. And I'm going to start making pastors resign by force because it is their members living the Bible more than them. They are not living the Bible. They are not preaching the Bible. And all of you who are handing over pastors for us to ordain, who don't know their left from their right, I will soon retire you from your offices because you are greater sinners than them. Any pastor who cannot cast out demons and lead people to pray for hours should not be the head of a prayer ministry. Any pastor who cannot pray for the sick should not be a pastor in throne room ministries. Any pastor who cannot even preach the simple gospel of salvation. It's not a title. You want a title? Go to the other churches. They are looking for members and title holders. Here it is work. It is service. Here we are warriors preparing the way for the... We are fighters. We ride on the white horse with the king. If you cannot ride on that horse with your sword and praise in your mouth, you are not supposed to be a leader here. So please, there is going to be a revolution. We are going to drop people from their horses whom have not lived up to the standard. From the local levels of the towers, zonal leaders, if you want somebody to be your tower pastor, then you better mentor him enough. Grow him enough. Set him on fire enough. And then test him and prove him. Lest an enemy kills him in the battle. But don't endanger their lives by living, by raising small people in the Lord, small children in the Lord, who don't know their left and their right, to go and lead a prayer cell 
where there are better people who know better than them. If you have them, go and remove them from power. I hope all the zonal leaders are hearing me. Between now and the end of this quarter, all of you must go and recheck your leaders and drop down some of them. Because we are entering into the real power play. This year is fire. That's how I was going to start. That was why my first talk today will have been Holy Ghost and fire. I introduced it yesterday night. Then I will anoint you into it. Because the minimum qualification for the church was Holy Ghost and fire. I repeat, the minimum qualification for everyone who got born again, born of the Spirit, was Holy Ghost and? Somebody say Holy Ghost and? Fire. Somebody say Holy Ghost and? Fire. With that, they survive everything. They were not afraid. They were not afraid of death. They were not afraid of principalities. They were not afraid of what the enemy could do to them. Because they saw themselves as gods. And now people who don't even know for God so loved the world are becoming leaders of churches. Leaders of cells. That is over in throne room ministries. If I visit your tower and I found out that some of your leaders who come around me are just confused people. I will instantly retire them in front of you. So get ready for that kind of revolution. You want to leave the ministry, leave the ministry. Let them go and learn. They are supposed to be children learning. You have made them masters when they have not become masters. You are more guilty than them. Somebody is your armor bearer. He's still learning and you then make him pastor. Pastor for what? Because he followed you to travel? That's why I thank God for PK. He rejected most of the names that were given from the different zones. Because when they went through the interviews, not that they were not qualified, but they still needed a little, a little bit of catching up, filling in, in one area of life or the other. And he had the guts to say no. Because if it came to me, I would say no. That's why we have not consecrated pastors for a few years. And when we consecrate, they are very few. But the zonal leaders must stop sending us pastors that are not qualified to be ordained. Just because they've been there for 20 years. Somebody can be here for 30 years and still be a child. Being pastor is not because of the years you have stayed. Some of them were called to be workers. Leave them as workers. Some of them were there to be deacons. Leave them as deacons. Why are you making them pastor? To kill them? Pastors are called. Pastors are chosen by the master. They too themselves feel the calling. Whether they are full time or not. It's not because of their works. You don't make people pastors, assistant pastors because they donate plenty. All those are part of the end time backsliding church. And we are not a church in that sense. That kind of church. We are the forerunners of the Messiah. Clothed in the white garments of the Messiah. Can we behave as forerunners of the Messiah? Watch us over his work. Thank you, Father. He is risen from the dead. He is Lord. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue. That Jesus Christ is Lord. Can we ask God to remove the clothes of last year oh. and put us in new garments of this year, please? Can I have that oil here? I will ask you to go and reconsecrate yourself and play all the retreat 
For now, the retreat tapes will do. And we play during this fast and pray over them and then pray also for the ministry. I have realized that there are those who stay who are now workers. They do not, they are workers not to move us forward or move us backward. But they just hold us and hold the status quo. So that we stand in one place, always settling quarrels and procrastinating, moving forward. Presumptuous people. We seem to have them in strategic places where they can blackmail us to stand still. They are not the hardcore of the ministry. But they are strategically placed to hold us back. Now, we want to break those walls where they are. Remove them from there so that water can flow. So that the mainstream can move forward. So you need to pray that God will open our eyes to see them. Because sometimes they are not really easily discernible. You don't discern them. You don't see them clearly. I repeat, you need to pray that God will open our eyes to do what? So that we move them. Because we feel a restriction. There was a lady who came here from outside the country. And said, she saw winds contending with division. And people holding the strategic places of division. That are agents of darkness. Or being used by powers of darkness. And I said, did he tell you? names or did he show you faces just describe them i will know them she said no but she says where they were coming from and that if she met them while she was here she only spent two days she will be able to point at them unfortunately she didn't even spend the two days she left the next day but there are things like that here anywhere there is a good thing of god Satan mixes in. And they all carry the face of angels. You know, they serve as angels of what? Of light. So you must join us to pray that God will break the veil. So that we too can see clearly. And we can take care of one another. At least we can shift them. Even if we are not removing them from the ministry. We can shift them from where they are blocking the water. Do you understand what I'm saying? So that water can flow. I'm not interested in sucking anybody. But at least I can remove you from where you are blocking my water. And then we can flow. And that is what we are praying for this first month and two months and three months. Before the next meeting. Let there be clearance for the next move. Because we know that season has come. Today, if you want the Lord to consecrate you for what is to come. And you want to come under this oil as a release from this ground as a worker to go out there and do the signs of God and manifest in the power of God I want you to step forward and just line up before me here let me pray for you I will anoint you with oil you go back to your seat and I will pray for all of you Jehovah you are the most high Jehovah, you are the most high God. Oh, Jehovah, you are the most high. Father, today, release us for the next season by this oil. Let there be a demarcation between the past and the future. Amen. And for each one of our lives here, let the oil call forth the new, the perfect, the most powerful. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Can somebody say amen? amen? Now my father, we have brought ourselves under your cover and under your shadow by the virtue of this oil. Therefore from today, Separate each one according to their families. Jesus. Touch their waters and heal them one by one. How can we serve other people if we be weak? 
How can we serve other people if we lack? How can we serve other people if we be naked? Baba, tonight, for the next three days, let your spirit go to war in our lives. Removing every form of nakedness in the name of Jesus. Anything that exposes us, smite it out of our lives. Today, whatever the earth is using to mock us or mock anyone here, by the virtue of the spirit in that oil on each head, let that mystery be removed and destroyed. I say your life will not go through humiliation again. Receive your deliverance in the name of Jesus. If you are a beggar, and Satan has put you in the place of compromise, today, I curse the spirit that has put you there. Or I curse the spirit that has made you a beggar. By that oil, that humiliation is lifted away from your head. If you have come to the end of the road, then today let another road open for you. In your places of work, you will prosper and multiply. Ah, from now, you will give God perfect service that will make him bless you. For every work you do with the Lord, I command a multiplication of favor. I decree that you will not beg for bread in the name of Jesus. And if in your family there is no place for expansion, I break the wall that limited you in that family. I release you to expand in the name of Jesus. Whatsoever your heart desired, whatsoever is needful for your spirit and your soul, by this oil, receive it in Jesus' name. Therefore, my father, carry each one out. And each one of us turn us for his signs. It doesn't matter where we walk, whether we walk within or outside the ministry, whether we walk on the grounds here, whether we are sweepers, whether we are cleaners, whether we are messengers, Father, whether we are carpenters or drivers, everyone shall be prosperous in Jesus' name. None shall lack their bread. None shall beg for bread. None shall be humiliated. Amen. Those who have waited for a long time. You said this, are the, this is the year of doors. Every door that moves us forward. Let it open in Jesus name. Amen. Above all father. Breathe a new lease of life into our bodies. Sanctify us and bless us with a new body. With a new spirit. With a new soul. Kindle the fire. That fire that creates a new heaven and on earth over our lives. Let it burn now. I declare everyone blessed. Amen. I declare them to become a troop wherever they enter. Amen. According to the promise of this year, this year, I saw the year full of messengers. Many messengers will work for you. Amen. Go and find your own messenger. Amen. And let them do the works of heaven for you. 
Let them do the work of supply for you. Let them bring you favor in the name of Jesus. Whether they be presidents or they be market people, I release them to release their power unto you. To serve and to bless you in the name of Jesus. My father, strange sicknesses and disease shall not eat from this house. I keep them outside your house in Jesus' name. Strange deaths shall not come to us. Can you shake your hand before the Lord? I decree in the name of Jesus that hand shall remain strong throughout this year. Bringing you fruitfulness and blessing wherever you enter. In the name of Jesus Christ. There was a prayer God was going to make me pray at the crossover. I didn't pray. He me to pray that now. The meaning of the prayer of Anna. Therefore, Lord, I decree before the heavens and the earth and each one that is standing here. That for every need that their lives need. Even if it had not been created. Create it for their sake and for them. Because of them reverse nature in the name of Jesus. Receive that favor and power in your lives in the name of Jesus. Go! And nothing shall be impossible for you. If God can create for you that which did not exist for your sake in order to move your life forward. Then all things are possible with you through God this year. Amen. Receive that blessing with thanksgiving now. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Somebody begin to bless the Lord for today. Just give him glory and praise.